Welcome to the Acupuncture Outsider Podcast. My name is Richard Hazel, and in the time it takes for you to commute to or from work, I hope to have shared something of interest about orthopedic acupuncture using motor points, trigger points, myofascial slings, uh, neurofunctional acupuncture, segmental treatments, anything that crosses my mind that seems to be of interest. I hope you'll enjoy it. Hello and welcome to the Acupuncture Outsider podcast. This is Richard Hazel. Today we are going to talk about um, some of the deep rotators of the hip. The, if you're aware of the deep six rotators of the hip, they are the piriformis, the obturator internus, obturator externus, the gemellus superior and inferior, and the quadratus femoris. They're all external rotators. The ones I really want to talk about are some neglected deep rotators of the lower glute area, the gemellus superior inferior and the obturator internus. Um, as acupuncturists in, in acupuncture education, very often we learn about the piriformis as a possible culprit for sciatica. Uh, about, I think the research shows that about 20% of people have a piriformis that has formed around the sciatic nerve. And when the piriformis gets tight, it will compress the sciatic nerve. And that is has been called piriformis syndrome. Um, less known um, by acupuncturists or anybody that I seem to read um, in the world of physical therapy or rehab or sports physiology or acupuncture forums is something called the deep gluteal syndrome which is a sciatic nerve entrapment without a discogenic origin. So basically, it's not an L5-S1 nerve compression. It is a sciatic nerve entrapment by the uh, those uh, four rotators in the hip, the piriformis, which is superficial to the sciatic nerve. And then those three in the lower glute area where we sit that are deep to the sciatic nerve. And when those muscles get tight, especially when sitting, they will compress, they will sandwich the sciatic nerve causing sciatica. Um, and I will say that even if somebody does have sciatica of a discogenic origin, that compression of the sciatic nerve from the L5-S1 region will cause the deep rotators to get tight. And you'll still have a deep gluteal syndrome that you need to resolve if you want to get, if you want to improve their sciatica. Um, I, I think if you have the same results that I get by paying attention to those three at the lower glute area, the gemelli and the obturator internus, that you will have very good success with treating sciatica of any origin. Um, and the ones that are glute deep gluteal syndrome, they get better and they stay better after very few treatments, um, sometimes one treatment. Um, I have... Um, after starting to treat those gemelli and the obturator internus a couple years ago on a regular basis for anyone with um, any sort of piriformis involvement, I saw my uh, results skyrocket. And um, I've seen some tough cases with spinal stenosis and uh, sciatica in over 60-year-old um, patients, and they get excellent results when you work on the deep rotators, those piriformis and those three other rotators 
or sciatica. And of course, um, I would treat the biceps femoris and then the peroneus longus um, because that's that pathway that the sciatic nerve takes and the sciatic pain takes and that that irritation of the sciatic nerve always tightens up the biceps femoris and the peroneus longus. So by treating those, um, you're kind of numbing out the sciatic pain with electric stimulation and then you're also restoring the function to those muscles that got tight because of the sciatica. Um, I use, I treat those lower rotators for a lot more than just sciatica. If you do a simple internal external rotation test with your patient on their back with their hip at 90 degrees and their knee at 90 degrees, you can just, it's not really a favor. You're, you're, you're not pinning, you're not pinning their, um, their ankle down at all. You're just going to, um, freely move the hip into external rotation. Like they're going to do like cross-legged sitting. And then you can move into internal rotation. Ideally, you want to get to at least 45 degrees of external or internal rotation. Most people have better than 45 uh, on external, but the internal, you'll find there are a lot of people that cannot achieve a 45 degree internal rotation of the hip. And when you see that person, they absolutely need to have more than their piriformis released. They have to really have those lower uh, rotators released. And in, it is possible to also need to release the, um, the psoas and the obturator externus. Um, but generally, just to focus on those deep rotators in the glutes, um, really pay attention to those uh, muscles because they, they definitely are affecting your, your hip pain patients. Um, anytime you see somebody with a hip impingement that pops on the inside, um, you definitely need to look at that, the psoas and the, and the, and the adductors, and make sure that their internal rotation is very, very good. Um, same thing with uh, the popping on the outside, like the IT band. Um, of course, we want to treat the TFL and the glute minimus um, for that um, IT band or uh, IT band popping, IT band syndrome, um, any kind of um, trochanteric bursitis. You really got to get into the internal rotators like the TFL and the glute min, but I always treat both because you want to free up internal and external rotation. They are antagonists for each other. So um, it's only half done if you release the piriformis and the gemelli obturator internus and you don't release the TFL and the glute minimus, gluteus minimus, sometimes um, adductors. Adductors can internally rotate the hip as well. Um, so you do have to pay attention to adductors, but the main point here is do not forget those lower rotators that can cause the gluteal um, impingement, that deep gluteal uh, syndrome. Um, if you have patients that have pain on sitting, a lot of times the hamstrings get blamed and the hamstrings definitely can be involved. And the hamstrings can actually uh, entrap the sciatic nerve. But that's not the only part of the problem. And in many, many cases, people who have pain on sitting have an issue with those gemelli muscles and the obturator internus. So really pay attention to those and you're going to get very fast results, very fast relief for people. Um, I just got a message from a patient I saw this week who's a nurse and she came in rather than, you know, like our, our form says something like reason for acupuncture. And then I expect them to say something like neck pain. Um, and then what makes it better? What makes it worse? So, so because she's a nurse and she's seen 
so many specialists, so many. She brought me this pile of papers and then she gave me the executive summary on the front with uh, the um, explanation for each of the tests and each of the experts, the, the MRI, and maybe she'd had a CT, and plus she'd had physical therapists and everyone has examined her hip problems. And so her reason for acupuncture was SI joint instability and um, malalignment. And then her, what makes it better um, was a chiropractic adjustment. Um, I think she said physical therapy. And then uh, what makes it worse was uh, dysfunctional movement patterns and um, malalignment of the SI joint. So she didn't give me many tips on like what was what were her symptoms. So um, so when I saw her, um, she told me about all the SI joint pain that she gets, and and it's really hard for her to stand. Um, she could she really couldn't stand for very long without pain, and um, and. She felt like her hip was always hiked on one side. So um, I did the internal external rotation um, test on her and her, her internal rotation was almost not existent on her bad on her worst side. Um, and so I really started out and I said, you know, and she's she's very like nervous about needles, even though she's a nurse, but um, so I said, okay, I'm just I'm going to focus on getting you out of pain today. There's a lot of stuff we need to work with as far as inhibited muscles and things that we need to get going stronger to avoid the issue coming back because those deep rotators are getting overused as a compensation. They are trying to stabilize the SI joint. And when the glute max is not strong and not stabilizing the glute medius even via some of those gluteal fascia um it could be something with the lats and the glutes it can be something with the hamstrings there are a lot of reasons that the si joints not getting stabilized and those deep rotators are the first thing they're going to get tight to try to stabilize and eventually it can cause dysfunction and pain so i said let me just try to get you out of pain i'm going to focus on the tight muscles so i treated the, the piriformis and the obturator internus and the glute gemelli motor points. Um, there's just one motor point that can hit that common tendon for the the gemelli and the obturator internus. That's in the in Dr. Aldo Perotto's book, the uh, handbook for the electromyographer. Uh, if you want to look that up, it's it's a, it's such an easy, great place to get all three with one needle. So I did that. I did the piriformis. Um, I did it on both sides. I treated with electric stim for about five minutes. And then on her side, I treated the TFL and the gluteus minimus on both sides. And then I treated her psoas um, on the front, also Dr. Perotto's location um, below the inguinal ligament. And, and then I had her move, and I and she felt so much better. And she didn't really trust that it would hold because that's been her experience. Um, she's had people do some manipulations that have given her relief. And then usually within a few days, she's back to where she was before the manipulation. So I said, I'm, I'm completely fine with you taking a skeptical approach. I'm used to that. Um, people don't come to acupuncturists at the beginning of their problem, they usually come to us after they've seen many, many other people and, and things didn't work out. So I expect you to be disappointed and, and also not um, very optimistic. So that's fine, but let's just see how it goes and we'll book your follow-up. Um, I had to book her a couple weeks out um, just for scheduling reasons. And so, but I got a message from her um, just a couple days ago and it's been it's been almost two weeks and she said she's she's um, um, cautiously optimistic because she's been so much better than she's been in in the past five years 
She said, I'm, I have better mobility. I have less pain than I've had in five years. So I'm cautiously optimistic and I'm looking forward to seeing you in my next appointment. So I'm very excited for her because that's actually, she's actually doing better than I expected. I thought she would feel better for at least four to six days and then she'd probably start to feel stuff coming back because I typically, I expect that until we really correct a lot of the imbalances of uh, inhibited muscles, the compensation is going to come back, come back. So um, I'm pleasantly surprised that she's doing that much better. But um, but that's like um, one of the uh, deep rotator patients that I that I saw recently. But I I see them so so frequently. Um, it's really satisfying when you get sciatica patients and you can knock out the sciatica in that in that treatment, and then they're better and you see them the following week when you're expecting them to say it lasted for four days or five days, but, and they just tell you, no, it's gone. But can we work on X, Y, and Z instead? Um, or, you know, it's, it's really common if you work on those rotators to have it get better. Um, and usually you're seeing sciatica patients before they've had any sort of imaging, so you don't know if it's discogenic or if it's a deep gluteal syndrome, but high, high percentage gluteal syndrome. Um, and I think even if they are having discogenic, you know, it's not, it's, it, it wouldn't be too many needles to go ahead and, tr and just treat segmentally as well. Um, that's fine. Sometimes I don't do it because it helps me to figure out which one they are. And then if they're not, if it's not holding, then I'm going to segmental as well as the deep gluteal syndrome. Um, but I, you know, I've been seeing a lot of patients with these issues. I'm treating a pain doctor, an MD who, um, heard about me from one of my patients who assists him in the OR and, um, he had had dry needling in Ohio and he was, um, looking forward to coming in and having me work on his deep hip issues. He has a lot of pain when standing and um, he gets numbness in his feet. And uh, so I did a similar assessment for him, and his internal rotation was almost not existent. Um, and I treated those muscles, and then I had him move around after I took needles out. He still had significant amount of pain. So I had to really dig in and find good uh, trigger points. And I use my Hypervolt to do that. I think it makes people more comfortable, and it's actually helpful to get in deep, push really deep to find these trigger points. And I think not everybody's probably going to be comfortable with me digging around in their lower glute area, but if I have the Hypervolt, they, uh, I think it's it's easier for them, and it's actually very helpful for me. You could use a massage gun with like a ball uh, attachment, and you can push in really deep. You can you can find the sensitive spots that need to be treated as trigger points. So um, he, he handled it very, very well. And, and I think having had dry needling before, he, he knew really what to expect. Um, I try to be very gentle, but I still uh, needed to get into those trigger points. And I did use a 25 gauge, 75 uh, millimeter needle um, to get into those trigger points on him because he has... Um, extremely dense muscle and it's not always a matter of um, athleticism I think it's just genetic some people have muscles that are so dense that they're just really tough to get into with with just a 30 gauge needle or uh, never mind anything thinner than that um, but I got him significant relief um, he of course felt the muscle soreness that feels kind of like bruising but but his pain was greatly reduced, and I'm seeing him next week for a follow-up. Um, and I expect we'll have to keep working on it. I think for him, it's going to be at least three to five visits before he tells me that he's had you know significant periods of time without pain, um, just because of how how many trigger points he had in these rotators. But he was encouraged, and he felt good uh, at the end of the treatment. I think we're going to get him some good relief. But uh, if I didn't address 
the Jamelli and the obturator internus, I'd be getting only about half the story. Be working on just his piriformis. I don't, I don't think that would have been nearly the results that we got. I feel the same about almost anything that involves a tight piriformis. Um, if you're treating it, if you're treating the, the piriformis for anything mobility related, um, greater trochanter, hip joint um, related, I think it's only half the treatment if you're just working on the piriformis and not getting the gemelli and the obturator internus. Um, it's relevant to discuss that the piriformis and the obturator internus are the two rotators that, that enter the pelvic floor. So there's another thing to consider. I've had three patients this year, male patients with genital numbness, erectile dysfunction, um, some other symptoms that were very similar that looked like they could be a pudendal nerve entrapment by the piriformis and obturator internus. And um, they responded very well to working on those rotators. Um, one of them I'm still seeing, it's a little more complicated than just the rotators, but we're getting into the adductor magnus, the abdominals, um, iliacus, and also attempting some nerve stimulation, like a neurofunctional stimulation uh, from the back. But um, he's getting, he's definitely getting good results. He's, um, he's putting his progress at 50% um, more sensation, which is good because he went from numb to having half of his sensation back, which is good. Um, so, and that's a, just another thing to think about for those rotators is that possible uh, pudendal nerve entrapment by those rotators. Uh, let me think if there's something else. Okay, so also I consider the rotators as antagonists to an IT band syndrome. So for instance, for IT band, I'm really going to focus on the TFL and the glute men. You know, the TFL starts to overwork, especially on runners, uh, for lateral stabilization or stand, uh, being able to stand on one leg or land on one leg and keep your pelvis in, in alignment. The, um, when the glute medius starts to, to weaken, usually from long runs, um, the TFL can assist in keeping the pelvis stable. And so does the gluteus minimus. But the gluteus minimus and the TFL, unlike the gluteus medius, are prone to shortening and tightening. So you'll start to have um, the TFL and glute med, med be really tight, and they can start to internally rotate the hip as well. Um, and the TFL pulls on the IT band, so... Yes, you also need to treat the quad and hamstring, but especially the vastus lateralis is a big part of that um, IT band issue. But my point is that in addition to treating the TFL and the gluteus minimus to get them back to normal length and flexibility, because they're going to both internally rotate, they're going to pull on the hip into internal rotation, those deep rotators are trying to correct for that so you can walk straight and they're going to get tight too. So if you have people who come in and they explain their hip pain as it wraps around, it's in front and it goes in back, that's those muscles fighting each other and putting a lot of pressure on the greater trochanter. So they may even have sensitive, um, they may have a burning or or sharp pain when you touch the greater trochanter through the through the IT band, you know, when they're on their side, that area can be very, very tight and, and tender. And it's usually those muscles fighting each other, the internal external rotators are like fighting and pulling on that hip. Um, so I would use the same treatment for the, the rotators. Um, for IT band syndrome, as well as something like greater trochanteric uh, bursitis, um, any kind of hip pain, really. If you 
I mean, of course, I'm not going to get into all hip pain and get into like flexors and extensors and add adductors and all of that. But, but that, that's something to keep in mind is, um, so much hip dysfunction is going to come from the muscles that get tight. We know about the glutes getting weak. That's the part of the PT that they always, I mean, every, everybody who's having hip issues or back issues or knee issues is getting their glutes focused on in physical therapy. But what else is going on here is the muscles that are prone to getting short and tight. It's those, those rotators and the TFL and the glute men. So really focusing on those muscles gets you excellent results for hip problems. Um, and then you can look into that, you know, adductors. Adductors are always going to get tight. They're definitely something to be considered. That's a, just, just a different podcast um, topic. But so I'm going to wrap this up. I'm just going to say pay attention to the other three rotators in the glute area. You don't, I mean, quadratus femoris, it does exist. It can compress the sciatic nerve. It is such an outlier that I'm just not even talking about it. Just look at the gemelli and the obturator internus and the piriformis as a group of muscles that should always be treated together. They sh you should not only be treating the piriformis. Those other three this is the other half of the equation. So um, give that a try. I would love to hear from you if you're having success with um, adding that to your treatments for hip problems. Um, my Instagram is Rich Hazel. My email is rich at richhazel.com. So I look forward to hearing from you if you're um, adding that and seeing some great success. And with that, I wish you a great week, and um, I will talk to you all next week.